Hi, uh, the speech uh, portion of this video is improvised. Sorry, short of breath because I'm smoking a cigarette. Uh, the speech uh, is improvised. It's um, 4.32 a.m. And I thought I'd uh, tell you all a little bit about my medication. Um, as you can see, I shaved recently, and as you can see, I probably need to shave again. Something that I have to do if I want to be a clean-shaven person, which I will do before I go to volunteering this morning. I'm a little bit anxious about it, and speaking of anxiety, um, this is clonazepam. Uh, it's a benzotropine. Yeah, so um, when I first went to the hospital at age 18, um, they prescribed me risperidone, which I don't have because right now I get that injected into my muscle, either the shoulders or the hips. There's four points, um, two different kinds of needles, a longer needle for the hip because they assume if you're on this drug, you're going to gain some weight. Uh, I did not gain weight on any of the drugs. Well, like I was like, well, I'm 6'2", maybe I'm shorter now, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, let's just say I'm 6 feet. Um, uh, and uh, I was, uh, I was one, I, I, I plateaued at 135 for a while. Then I plateaued at 145 pounds. Then when I started drinking alcohol regularly for a few years, I got up past 150, I think I got 155. I quit alcohol and started walking a lot, among other things. And I'm back down to 145. Uh, and I know that, yeah, I, I do have a video on my channel um, that's kind of like a joke. Uh, uh, my friend, uh, my good friend, um, g gave me a, I don't know how to use it, minor hornbacker. Um, I think it's called Wasted or something. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I just, I got... I've, I, I didn't really go to university. I, I never took any um, feminist classes, really. I think I was raised uh, in a feminist environment, I, I hope, or, or I mean at least more than other places. Um, but I never really intentionally s studied it, um, which does that relate to my medication? I don't know. I could really talk a lot about this stuff. Uh, and like I said, the speech part is improvised. So, uh, so baseline, risperidone. That's like my core drug that keeps me functional. And when I was 18 and put on it, I wasn't taking the pill every day both intentionally and unintentionally, I would miss doses. And so they, they put me on, I know I was injected with something called Purportal. You'll have to figure out the spelling for that. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, you, you read things on the internet about these drugs and there's like so many people will tell you just get off the drugs and um, I agree with that. Like, I don't think the drugs are fun. I don't want to be on the drugs. But I have found over 14 years, for myself at least, that if I don't take the drugs, uh, the, the prescribed drugs, um, just can't escape it and you know you could you could say like oh my fascist parents or my fascist government or what maybe it's fascism maybe it's not but 
I just have to accept it. <laughs> is, is that okay? <laughs> like, I think I do. I most of the time I feel like we live in a democracy and we have a say, and we have power to shape our lives and the world around us. Most of the time, I do feel that way. Um, so, um, so this clonazepam. Um, when I quit drinking, I was put on between one and four 0 0.5 milligram tablets. Uh, that'll mean more to the science people, the people who know the, all the science about everything. Um, uh, and uh, I really struggled with it because I didn't want to be on the drug at all. I've been on the drug before and the internet says it's addictive and a narcotic and all the, you know, like, and, you know, like, you read on the internet about how, like, heroin without the E, I know, it's, I thought I was so clever when I, um, conflated the drug heroin with heroin or, like, you know, the female hero, but they are separate things, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure. Um, so heroin, the drug, um, was legal, um, and it was used to treat soldiers in, like, World War One. And then those soldiers continued to live their lives, and they no longer, technically they didn't need it anymore, but they were addicted. And then, like, of course, people glorified the soldiers and they wanted to be like them. So they took the drug and they got addicted and then somehow it got into the musical culture. I, do, I, don't, I'm, I don't know the history, and, uh, but it's bad stuff. <coughs> so I do get injected with, um, into the muscle, not into the vein, uh, with risperidone. And basically, like, if I ever find my way out of this medication maze, that will be the last one to go. Back to the clonazepam. This is for anxiety. I'm feeling anxiety right now. And, um... The, the Wikipedia classifies... Um, you start with, um, what do they call it? Ativan, which is, I don't know, look it up. There's Ativan, uh, Diazepam, um, something in between, and Clonazepam, and then it goes even more intense, and this like, you, you can mess yourself up if you take this wrong. <laughs> or if you take it all, at all. <laughs> like, it's, it's something that... And this is why people say get off the drugs, because you can really get messed up taking these drugs. And, of, of course, I shouldn't be smoking cigarettes. I should not be drinking Coca-Cola. I should not be drinking too much coffee. I think the my medical team I think they they never said it was a concession but they did kind of say like yeah just have one or two cups in the morning but don't take more and I I drink like seven but like um uh sorry um so First I was put on, when I quit drinking, I was put on one to four, and I was also put on um, benzotropine, which is cogentin, which is a muscle relaxant. Um, the risperidone causes tardive dyskinesia and long-term use, in some cases, I think is the thing. And so, um, tardive dyskinesia is like a twitchiness, 
I really don't think I have it. I used to have a thing where I held my arm like this when I was walking down the street. I, I would be walking like that. And I think it really was like kind of like a defensive mechanism because I was afraid of people. Um, but I thought it was a form of tardive. Um, and uh, so, I, what I really wanted to do is to show you just um, so you can see for yourself the amount of medication I take per day. So let's start, here we are. So right now it is 4.43 a.m. Let's pretend it is 7 a.m. So I would take the lithium and I would take out two can you see this? Two, where are we? La 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 la. Okay. <laughs> Two, um, 300 milligram pills of lithium in the morning. Take one in Vega, which is the next generation of Risperidone. I won't go over my basic, just to keep adding drugs and stuff. Uh, and so that is uh, three milligrams once per day. And that really helped me. I, I was really suffering. And, uh, you know, it's like heaven and hell. Like, I don't believe, or I do believe, I don't know. Um, uh, la la. Um, benzotropine, which is the cogentin, which is the muscle relaxant for the tardive dyskinesia from the respiratone. And then we take, where are we here? And we take um, two anti-anxiety pills, which are quite powerful. And I take up to seven of those per day between four and seven at the moment. So if you can, I hope you can see. The, 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 that would be my morning dose. Okay, so I would take that every day in the morning. Or I do take that every day in the morning. Um, and uh, put those back in the bottle. Now, so at 7 a.m. I take all those pills. And I think you can imagine it changes what I experience, what I feel how my thoughts and emotions go in my mind and it kind of calms me down or numbs me out or whatever you want to call it um, so I can go to wherever I have to go. I have to go to volunteering, that's where I'm at right now, but if I had to go to school or to work, <coughs> it would mean I would be able to um, do that. So, um, and people tell me I'm doing quite well. They're telling me I'm trusting that I'm trusting. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to trust people. Um, 
And maybe it's legitimately, maybe you should legitimately not trust people. But um, I guess trust, I don't know. I There's probably books written about trust. I don't know. Uh, anyways, so let's say we take one of these bottles. Here's the cap. So we, we've got one of these empty bottles because I get my pills refilled once a week. And so we take this bottle and we take, th or I take, um, three uh, anxiety pills. Here you go, and you just put that in your pocket, you put that in your coat, or you put that in your pants, or, or your bag, or whatever you want to. Um, just carry that with you, so when I'm at volunteering, or if you were at school, <coughs> start to freak out. I think it usually takes at least half an hour to kick in, but you know, just the act of taking it calms me down. Um, so, like, basically, like, that's like... I don't think I've had a real panic attack, but, like, you know, if you start to get edgy, and you still have to function, and you can't really be functioning when you're so edgy. Um, and I don't mean that in as an edgy humor or anything like that. Uh, because it's not a good edge. Um, and uh, does, doesn't make you funnier, doesn't make you smarter, doesn't make you better at music, doesn't make you anything but vulnerable and like potentially dangerous if you're edgy. Um, so, yeah, um, that's my medication. Uh, I'm sorry this video is 17 minutes. I didn't expect it to take that long. Oh, I want it. Okay, so, yeah. Um, so I take two Clono, the uh, clonazepam in the morning, and then in the evening I take two more lithium. Uh, so like 12 hours apart, like it's a, theoretically it's supposed to help me be able to sleep better. The lithium uh, is like kind of like a, what, I'm going to use the term snowball. Um, if you're Canadian, you know what I'm talking about, like when you get, um, really cold and your mind kind of freezes up um, it's not the any other kind of interpretation of snow s snowball uh, I'm talking about snow that falls from the sky that is ice uh, frozen water <coughs> I'm a bad person um, okay I'm a good person okay <laughs> so uh, thank you goodbye